just two days away from the Super Bowl, easily one of the most talked about and most watched events of the year. And for this year's advertisers, like Molson Coors, there is no bigger moment to get the word out about their brands. We spoke this week with one of their marketing executives on that very subject. When we think about the Super Bowl and we think about advertising, it's probably one of the only times of the year that consumers actually care about ads. Most of the time they're trying to get away from ads, but uh, during the Super Bowl, they're actually trying to watch ads and they're seeking them out. You hear me? Of course, it's one thing to get in on the attention. It's another thing to get the attention that a brand is seeking. Joining us with his Super Bowl ad campaign playbook is John York. John is the CEO of Rain and our go-to marketing export. Uh, happy Super Bowl weekend. Um, how big of an event, I mean, is this? I mean, here's, here's a ex uh, marketing executive saying there's no bigger opportunity out there. That, that still holds in 2024. It absolutely does, but yeah. uh, you know, I'm shocked that people don't like ads. I didn't know that people, <laughs> people didn't like advertising. You've been fighting it your whole life. I thought, yeah. I thought that's all we live for. Yeah, but, uh, yeah it's, um, you know, well, it's $8 million big is what it is. That's what uh, the going rate is. It was up to $7 million, um, early, so those who got in, in early got a deal. And then with all of the Taylor Swift, and I apologize because I have to mention it, Again, the Taylor Swift hype. I know. Yeah, You're just, a big fan. It doesn't go anywhere, it's okay. but it's $8 million a, a spot and uh, for those getting in, uh, in into the spirit of things. Yeah. It, it, it feels like there's a lot of buzz and interest in whatever's happening, and that's a great opportunity for advertisers. Is there a theme that we should watch for with these advertisements this year? Yeah, so every year, you know, they're always, you, you'll look at the trends. Last year was it celebrity. 100% of the ads that ran last year had a celebrity in it. Uh, this year, the, the themes are a little different. One is that there's some really weird ads um, mm. You know, like there's some sh like like trying to stand out from uh, being strange or, or I, I don't know, maybe off putting. Um, I know Pluto TV. Uh, I think we have a clip of the Pluto TV ad uh, called Couch Potato, which is uh, one of the more strange uh, ways to get to an audience. OK, let's get to that one. Here, this is Pluto TV country. Here on this farm, we grow couch potatoes. <laughs> Couch potatoes grow big and strong here, fed with the finest content for Pluto TV. Thousands of TV shows and movies for free. You just open the app, something great will be on. I love Star Trek. Uh, I love romance, but I also love murder. I like romantic murders. SpongeBob SquarePants. Cats 24-7 channel. I love Ink Master. Pluto TV just gets me. All right, kind of reminds me of Wally. -E. Like we're all sort of <laughs> headed to uh, a world where we're I just in a potato patch there yeah. watching some screens. I think of that movie often and I'm like, I'm like, it's pretty scary how accurate it seems like we're trending towards. So no, I'm not going on a cruise. But so. like, what is the market, like what's the end decision by in the boardroom around, we're gonna go weird, it's gonna cost a lot, but right. there's big upside. What goes into that thinking? Well, I think it's standing out, right? I mean, because it's so important, you really have to, like you're trying to win like you're trying to win the Super Bowl as the highlight, as the guys, as the talkability, the water cooler afterward. And I think that, you know, celebrities used to be the way to do that because people were excited. I remember Be Betty White did a major commercial with Snickers. Um, but now it's about like, how do you stand out? And the thing that's strange this year about standing out is another trend is there's this like rerun uh, mentality. There's like, they're bringing back commercials from the past. So, you know, they're bringing back the Gronk kick of destiny with FanDuel. Have seen that. Yeah, it's yeah, literally and that's everywhere. Yeah. But they're able to, what's interesting with that idea is they're able to get a run up. You're able to start building up. So people will almost have appointment TV within appointment TV to watch whether or not he makes it. So there's there's hype there, but they bring back a lot of the commercials. So re, re uh, living old ideas sometimes uh, is risky. Okay, and just for our Canadian audience, some of these ads you got to go to YouTube to check out. We heard the Molson Coors executive who is uh, specifically making ads for Canada and the U.S. as well. Yeah. But, I mean, um, the, uh, you've got an American carrier, T-Mobile, yeah. that is doing what you're talking about, kind of going back to the well? Yeah, so last year they ran an ad with Zach Braff and, uh, and John Travolta, and they did a grease um, little theme. And this year they decided to bring it back and, and add another celebrity, because that's the other trend, lots all of celebrities. All right, let's take a look at that. See. Yeah. 
Yeah, what's up? We have T-Mobile now. So the, the goal there, aside from just being part of the conversation, having fun, you're going back to something that, that, that already tested well or something like that? Yeah, and I guess with Flashdance, you know, you're, you're, you're sort of trying to continue on this theme of, of 70s, 80s uh, musicals, and, uh, you know, maybe next year they'll move to a 90s musical. Um, yeah, so there's one thing about being repetitive, and the other is trying to create a campaign. So how campaignable is it to continue this on? You know, you saw Snickers, the Hungry uh, campaign was able to go on for years. There's lots of commercials that go on for a long time. I think that when you have $8 million of the Super Bowl, I, I, I think that they're playing it safe. They want to make sure you remember, oh, that's what they did this year. You, uh, you said last year was more of a celebrity year, but we just saw some celebrities there, and I think you've got more celebrity ads. So it is yeah. still celebrity year. It is still celebrity year. What I would say is that it's, it's more, um, I think 40% of the ads use multiple celebrities. In oh, them. multiple So now it's year. like even bigger. So not only are we getting one celebrity, we're getting two or three. What's an example this year? BMW uh, maybe? Yeah, BMW is one of my favorite because it, uh, you know, used Christopher Walken, in it, and it's really clever. If you're going to use Christopher Walken, like use, use the actor and the character that, that's there. There, and then they m uh, mash him up with Usher. Okay, let's take a look at that. Hello, Mr. Walken. Does this table work for you? Yeah. Yeah. Did someone say yeah? Don't you got somewhere to be? Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's only one Christopher Walken and only one ultimate driving machine. The rest are just imitations. Come on. I was hoping uh, Christopher Walken was going to tell Usher about a bucket of cream and two mice there. That would have been fun. But that, so, so that is pairing the celebrity, including Usher, who's involved in the big halftime show, I think. Right, and, and the, everybody in the commercial does an impression of Christopher Walken, which is fun, but Usher's impression is actually doing the Christopher Walken dance from a Fatboy Slim commercial, a uh, oh, video from years ago. Yes. So, so it gets the throwback oh, in and everything. So it's, oh, it's, it's really clever. Um, yeah, so something that's worth watching. A lot of Easter eggs. We're out of time. Are you going to...